Hey bitches, welcome back to another episode of Cunt Fessionals. Today's episode is gonna be about fake bitches. I'm gonna talk about some of my friendship breakups that I've had and how I got over them, how I became more selective about choosing friends and what friendship means to me now. I kind of already did an episode on this for the first one. I forgot what it was about, but I remember mentioning this. And in this episode, I kind of want to get a little bit more personal and talk about what went on with these friendships. Um, The first one that I'm going to discuss, it was kind of like a homoerotic, what's it called? Like when you're straight, but you have those gay ass friendships. It was one of those. It was one of those. And I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to go kind of into it. Most of these friendships have been with women. And I don't know. I'm kind of in a place in my life where I think it's a little bit hard to make friends. And I'm a really social person. Like, I'm pretty extroverted. When I go out, it's really easy for me to talk to people and make friends. But when it comes to true deep friendships I've been finding the older I get the more difficult I find it to cultivate those or to form those because I don't know I just I'm becoming more selective and I've had way more friendship breakups than I'd like to admit and it took me years to really know like why I kept having these failed friendships I don't think it's normal to have a lot of friendship breakups. I think it's normal to grow apart or to maybe change the terms of the friendship or, you know, to not really have anything in common with someone and just be casual friends. But I don't think it's normal to deeply connect with somebody, to establish these lines of trust and then have the friendship completely fall through on like and that happening a lot of times with multiple people I don't think that's normal and I've had a lot of friendship breakups and it took me till like last year to really notice that and be and ask myself what the fuck is going on why have I broken up with so many girls that that just doesn't make any sense to me and these friendship breakups are not passive it's not like you just grow apart it's some of those it's some of those were pretty like confrontational and the others were just like there were they were all negative in a way and I had to really question why that was happening and I kind of mentioned that is in a mentioned this in another episode that it was my mommy issues and the people I was attracting and it all comes down to that right like I think with with friendships it it all comes down to what you allow in your life. And now that I'm becoming more selective, it's become a lot harder to make friends. And I think the friends that I have now, I treasure a lot more deeply. And I also don't get attached that quickly because I used to make friends and then get attached really fast. And now I'm just kind of letting time tell what kind of friends they're going to be. But yes, in today's episode, I'm going to talk about my friendship breakups. I'm going to talk about a few of them. Uh, I'm going to talk about homoerotic friendships a little bit. I am also going to talk about the desire for connection and community that humans have and how we need each other and human beings need friends. I'm going to talk about the types of friendships that some people find acceptable, that I find acceptable. And finally, I'm going to talk about my present approach with friends and the grieving process that I've had and currently have with the lost friendships. But yes, without further ado, let's get this episode started. Once upon a time in the year 2016, I was drinking heavily, partying every weekend, and making out with two to five girls a week. I was having the time of my life and 
I didn't really have a lot of friends at the time, but I did hang out with these two girls a lot. And I met these girls in college. Well, I met one of them first through her boyfriend because her boyfriend was in my class and we had a study group going on. And we were in the study group. We were studying for a history final and it was a big group of people. And at the end, uh, everybody left and I was about to leave. But the guy, the boyfriend was told me like, hey, my girlfriend's bringing a burger. Do you want any? And I was like, oh, yeah, sure. I'm super hungry. So she brings in Whataburger and I start talking with her and the rest is history. We become great friends. I meet her other best friend and yeah, it becomes a trio. And this is when I learned that when you are the third coming into like a trio with two best friends already, this is when you should know your place. But I didn't know that at the time. But at the time... I was having a lot of fun with them. We were partying a lot, having sleepovers, going hiking, doing all these activities. And I'd never really had female friendships like that. Like I had friends in high school and we would do these kinds of things, but I never really connected deeply with girls to this extent. And yeah, just hanging out super often. Like I had another best friend, girl best friend at the time, but we weren't hanging out as often. So I was able to connect with these girls like I never had before. And with one of them, with the girlfriend of the guy that was in my class, that bitch and I would be making out literally. I mean, I was making out with both of them, but we'd be making out like every weekend. And this might not seem significant because girls make out with each other all the time, but During this time in 2016, I was kind of going through a gay awakening. I never really labeled myself as bi, just because even to this day, I still feel like an imposter. But that's when I discovered I liked girls and that I was attracted to girls. And I was really attracted to this girl. And I remember one time we were really close to hooking up and she stopped me. She was like, no, no, you know, I can't because of insert name. And I said, girl, it's okay. We're girls. It doesn't count. Yeah. Super homophobic, but whatever. I was 21 and horny. Okay. And I didn't even know at the time, but yeah, we didn't do anything. And long story short, the friendships fall through and it fell through because I started dating this guy who was way older than me. I was 21. I was a fresh 21 year old. And this guy was 29 or 30 years old, something like that. And, you know, just a typical douche, nothing extreme, but just, you know, a douche. And I break up with him. I'm heartbroken. And I try to reach out to them for support, right? Because they're my friends. And these bitches start ignoring me. They completely just go ghost on me. And they had already been kind of detaching like you know what when guys slowly start to wean off of you or detach from you and they start being less affectionate because they want you to break up with them these bitches were doing that or at least it felt like it and they kept ignoring me because I was sad and it's not like I was bombarding them with this issue like I wasn't at all like I just needed support because I hadn't dated in a long time and and then I did and it hurt right So the other one that I didn't have a crush on, she was like, I have a life. Like, I don't have time for this because I I sent them a text message and I said, hey, I feel like you guys are ignoring me. Like, you're not really, you know, being supportive in this, whatever. And that she messaged me that and she said, I don't really have time for this. Like, I think you're overreacting and, you know, I'm, I'm busy. I have a busy schedule. This bitch worked at PetSmart part time and didn't go to school. I felt like telling her that, but I didn't. I I bit my tongue. And then the other girl that I had a crush on, but I didn't know how to crush on, she just ignored me. So I was really heartbroken and I decided to just kind of like stop talking to them and see if they would ever reach out. And they never did. They never did. I think they would only reach out to party. Like, they stopped wanting to just hang out with me to hang out. And we we would do that a lot. Like, we wouldn't just party. And they stopped. And 
I ended up like dating somebody else and like after that like things just completely fell through and I remember at <laughs> uh, the girl's wedding the one that I see that I had a crush on that I didn't know I had a crush on she she got married right and I went to her wedding and I hadn't hung out with them in a long time and I hadn't interacted with them at all and they hadn't asked how I was doing nothing but the invite was still there right to her wedding so I went and she she asked me to help her with her dress because she needed to pee and the other girl was there and we go to the restroom and help her lift up her big ass dress and this is like a big bonding moment right like you're helping your friend lift up her dress to pee at her wedding and I was I had already been drinking like we had a bottle of Don Julio at our table and she was they weren't sitting with us like I was with my ex at the time with my ex and then with um, my other friends and we were sitting just fucking drinking that Don Julio so I was helping her out I was already already drunk and I just feel like they're not on my throat and I just feel like crying and I'm trying to hold it I'm trying to hold it because I'm not gonna cry at this bitch's wedding like what the fuck so I just help her and then like I'm just like oh my god like I feel I forgot what excuse I gave but I just leave like I I leave and then I tell my ex like we have to go because I'm just like about to cry so we leave and I just burst in tears and I'm just crying and I never really understood why I was so heartbroken I mean now I think I do I think it was just like my first I was just heartbroken that it was my first friends in a long time. And I think I kind of had a crush on this girl. Like, I don't think it was a real crush, but it was, I was definitely lusting. But it was, I don't know, like there was just a lot of emotions involved with the both of them. And when, then with this girl getting married and, and yeah, no, it just felt really weird because I was so vulnerable with them. Like I shared a lot of secrets with them. I I don't know. They shared a lot of stuff with me. I we just connected. I forgot to mention this. I don't know if it was before or after her wedding, but this girl, the one that I had a crush on, but I didn't know I had a crush on. She told me that the only reason she befriended me was to suss me out. Because I was hanging out with her boyfriend. First of all, I was not hanging out with her boyfriend. We were in a study group with a shit ton of other people. And I had only been alone in the library with him for like a few minutes. So there was really nothing. I mean, I guess, you know, if you want to suss something out, but whatever. I was, I did not want that man. I did not want that man at all. And I knew he had a girlfriend. And I'm not that type of bitch. But yeah. She told me that the only reason she befriended me was to see what was going on. To suss me out. And then that she just ended up liking me. And I think that in the moment, I didn't really catch how bad that was. But it makes sense why it was so easy for them to just kind of let me go for no reason. And like the moment that I wasn't this fucking party animal that was just like positive and catering to them all the time like the moment that that stopped they were they completely disconnected like just a hundred percent so yeah I mean it it sucked it really sucked and I think it was just a combination of vulnerability plus sprinkling some gay shit in there but yeah, I mean, that was how, that was my first true friendship breakup. And it hurt a lot. And I didn't really understand what had happened. Like, I was, I just grew really resentful. And at the time, I didn't have the self awareness to look inwards and be like, how did I let this happen? Like, what red flags did I miss? I didn't have the self awareness to do any of that. So I just grew resentful. And then that's it. And I, you know, made other friends. And recently, I had three friendship breakups in a year. In 2023, I broke up with three girlfriends. And that's a lot. And they were, they, they were not, like, mild breakups. One of them 
had been a friend for 10 years. This was a 10 year friendship that I had to end. And then the other one was a four year friendship. And this bitch did me dirty, 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 like, like bad, bad, bad. And then the other one, this bitch did me, I think, I don't even know who did me dirtiest, honestly. <laughs> but this bitch, I, I hadn't been, I hadn't known her for a while. She was, she, I, she used to be my roommate. And then we became friends and then I had to end things because it was just not, like, not good for me at all. But uh, they all did me dirty. And I wondered, like, that's when I started wondering, like, what the fuck, what am I doing? Like, what am I doing that is just attracting all these people that are doing me dirty? And I deducted some information. I was like, okay, there's all these girls doing me dirty. So it's female friendships that I'm ha having issues with. So a common denominator, they're all women. And they're all doing me dirty. How are they doing me dirty? Like, how are they... What am I doing and what are they doing or not doing? So I have to do like this whole equation. And for example, with the friend that the 10 year friend, she just never put any effort into the friendship. Like sometimes she did, but in the last year, she hadn't put any effort at all. And I noticed that I was always the one like keeping in line, a line of communi communication. And I noticed also that when I shared something positive or like positive dating experiences, she would just kind of say something negative. And this part I kind of empathize with because, you know, as women, we just we're on guard all the time. And I think she was just projecting some trust issues, which I totally understand. Like I this part, I'm not really like demonizing her for like I'm not really demonizing anything. But this part specifically, I get. But it, it still hurt that she didn't have the capacity to just be happy for me and be like, oh, my God, like, I hope this really turns out well. Like, just be careful, you know, like something like that. It was always something negative. And then this was the part, the part that hurt me the most was that I had already noticed that she wasn't putting in any effort, that she was only messaging me to talk about her dating shit. Also, her life was really chaotic, which I based on what I know about her, I get, I understand, been there. But every time I tried to help or to, or to tell her the truth, I was, I tried to be as gentle as I could with the truth, but I, I just couldn't enable that sort of behavior or that sort of chaos. Every time I tried to tell her something, it was just like one year in one year out the other. Like I was just completely ignored. And yeah, um, the part that hurt me the most was that I already knew that she wasn't putting in any effort. She wasn't taking in any of my advice, not valuing my presence at all. So I just disconnected. Like I was, I stopped talking to her and I'm like, we'll see if she reaches out. We'll see. And I did something, maybe it was not the most mature thing, but it was mild. I had ended up in the hospital because I have chronic UTIs and uh, that UTI became a kidney infection that became sepsis. So there was bacteria in my blood and that shit is deadly. I could have died if it was left untreated. And I went to the hospital. They gave me morphine and then they sent me home. I got a call from another doctor saying that first doctor should not have sent you home. Please come back or else you're gonna croak. And I went back and I had to stay, spend a night, a night or two in the hospital so they could put IV antibiotics in me. And I decided to bait her and add her to my close friends again and then do one of those hospital pictures and see if she would, like, ask me anything, like, how I was doing. And she did. I posted a hospital photo and she was like, oh, my God, what happened? And I told her. And then she was like, oh, okay, like, sorry, I've been MIA. It's just I've had so much going on. And she just went on a paragraph talking about herself. and. I didn't respond to that because like there was like she asked me if I was just OK. And then I said, yeah, I mean, I almost died. But <laughs> and then she was like, oh, OK, anyway. <laughs> and then, you know, you know, what I mean? you know, what I mean? I'm not making a lot of sense. But yeah, that that hurt. That hurt. And uh, I was so I was I was just she never followed up like days passed, weeks passed. And she never followed up on my 
on my health. And she had been in the hospital for something else months prior. And I was just, I remember just checking up on her because her shit was kind of severe too. And yeah, no, like it just wasn't being done for me. And then the girl that used to be my roommate, this one's shorter. I mean, she had really bad male friends that she kept justifying. And this girl prided herself in being a girl's girl and not being a pick me or whatever. But I think she was not a pick me kind of generally when it came to just any men. Like we would party and hang out and I would have a great time with her. Honestly, low key, low key, I miss partying with that bitch because she was so much fun. She was so much fun. Um, but I can't go back. I can't go back because that bitch was not good for me. Uh, she had very terrible, terrible male friends. And when I was around them, like she would kind of make me feel bad for not liking some of her male friends. But yeah, they they were really bad, like rapey, we're in danger type of friends. And it got to things getting really bad twice for me to cut her off. Like the second time I was just like, you know what? This has already happened. This is the second time happening. I'm sorry. Like I can't be friends with you anymore. And then she would also talk a lot of shit about her friends, her female friends. And that made me question if she was just like talking shit behind my back too. So I just ended that. That friendship was didn't last long. But yeah, it, it still hurt because I had a lot of fun with her. And we we knew how to party together. Like I haven't found that in another girl. Like it just as a one-on-one thing. I have that's hard to find, I think. But is it worth the drama? No. And then the other girl, we had been friends for four years, and ugh, I'm gonna try and make this short. So this episode doesn't go overboard but she god this one this one I think I feel like this is the one that did me the dirtiest and they all did me dirty in their own way and I think they're all in the same range but this one this one was just like what like it I feel like the other two were lacked a lot of self-awareness like my 10 year friendship, she was just so caught up in her drama and she was so, she lacked so much self awareness and she was selfish, right? Like she kind of just could only look at herself and didn't really know how to be a good friend. And then, same thing with the other one. Like, I think the other one was just conflict avoidant and she was a people pleaser and didn't want to. Like that that's why she talks shit about other people. Like she just wanted to like blend in and be liked so bad that it jeopardized her good friendships. And she lacked some self-awareness or some accountability there as well. But this one, this one just seemed like very like I I don't even know how to describe it because what the fuck would you ex like how? Any okay, I'll get to the story. I'll get to the story. So this girl and I have been friends for four years. And she came to LA to visit me and we had been talking about, you know, maybe her moving to LA because she did not like Texas. And I told her we should room together. You know, we could get a three bedroom, you, my brother and I, it would be so much cheaper for us to be three roommates instead of two. And yeah, I could get you a job, like have a job lined up for you blah 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 we talked we talked about it for months and we came to the decision that she was moving and I was so excited I was planning everything at the time I had an apartment in downtown LA that was crazy expensive way out of my budget and I couldn't wait to move out and she was like you know what I don't think I'll be ready in the fall but let's do winter or something like that like we had I think I think my lease was up in October or November and I had to extend month to month till December or January, something like that. And it was going to be, it was going to cost me like thousands of dollars to do that. But I thought, you know what? It's going to be worth it because I'm going to be saving way more rent in the long run. And if it buys her time, like that's okay. That's fine. So I extended my lease two months. I paid, oh my God, I lost like, they raised my rent. Like month to month is more expensive. So it was that. And then, it was two months of not looking for anything cheaper. So I probably like 
wasted like five around five thousand with that, right? And yeah, I mean, I think I think you already know what happens. I think she, you know, you already know. But anyway, so I go. I have to fly to Texas to do some visiting family and to pick her up. Right. I mostly go just to pick her up because I don't like visiting my family there. Like I don't have a good relationship. So if I don't have to go, I won't go. But I was going to go pick her up. So I went and I'm trying to communicate with her. And I'm like, hey, um, we were supposed to drive her car. I was like, how's your car doing? She's like, oh, my God, like, I don't know. She takes really long to reply to my messages and I'm there for a week. So I'm just kind of hanging out with other people and. I'm telling her like, hey, can I, I wanted to take my clothing rack. So I'm like, hey, can I leave my clothing rack at your place so we could just take it um, when we go back? And she's like, yeah, sure. So she's messaging me as if she's, you know, we're on board with the plan. And then like two days before, I'm like, hey, like, how are you feeling? Are you ready to go? Uh, what time should I, I need to, oh yeah, I should get you. At, I don't know. Like, I'm just trying to coordinate times and she just doesn't reply to me at all. Like she completely goes ghost. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, maybe she's busy. And she says that she's working a lot. So I'm like, okay, maybe she's just working a lot, whatever. And the day before we're supposed to leave arrives, right? And I didn't drive to to El Paso. I, I flew because we were supposed to drive her car back. And her car was supposedly having problems. So I'm just like, oh, we could just rent a car. You know, it's it's not going to be that expensive. We could rent a car. And we could ship yours out later. We could figure it out. Like, um, she was supposed to stay at my apartment, which I was going to let her stay in for free for like three weeks. The really expensive one. Um, just so she can have time to sort her stuff out. I'm like, you don't need a car anyway for like the first three weeks to a month. Because you could just stay in my place and you could use my car, you know, public transit. My brother can show you whatever. And she doesn't reply to me. I'm like, Trying to provide solutions. We, you, we can rent a U-Haul. We can rent a car. Like, let's make it happen. Are you packed? And she just doesn't reply to me. The night before I'm supposed to, we're supposed to leave. So literally the night before, because I work the night after. So I have to leave. And I'm just like, hey, um, is this happening? Like, why are you ignoring me? Like, what is going on? Oh, and I call her too. She doesn't answer. Yeah, I text her. I'm like, should I be getting my own ticket to go back to LA by myself? Please communicate what is going on. Why are you not replying to me? And she's like, yeah, I'm sorry. I can't do it. The night before, when I've already extended the lease two months, when now I'm going to have to pay for movers by myself. We were supposed to pay, like split that. Now I have to front like $500 out of pocket for movers and I also have to get my ticket back to LA which is $400 $450 I'm gonna make this shorter I, I I'm still open to a friendship and she's like I'm gonna pay you back for everything whatever long story short she doesn't she tells me I tell her to at least pay me back the flight she pays me, she tells me she's going to pay me for the flight for all of it. It's like 450. She ends up, she gives me 160 and she's like, can I give you the rest later? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Take your time. No worries. Um, she doesn't give, she doesn't give me anything. Like she goes ghost again for weeks and then doesn't give me anything. And I, ta I talk to her and I'm like, you have a communication problem. Like this could have all been avoided if you just told me that you weren't ready to move. Like you could, and I was like, how long have you been? thinking that you weren't ready and she's like months and I'm like bitch like just tell me she she told me that I intimidated her and that's why she didn't tell me but I don't buy that shit I don't buy that shit because I've never been hostile I've never been rude I've never been any of that and at first I was like okay maybe I, I have kind of maybe I don't know communicated that in some way but no, there's just, a, I asked friends, other friends that I have, and they were like, no, like, you're the person that we feel like most comfortable saying anything to, like, no judgment at all. So, yeah, uh, that happens. And I tell her, like, I'm still open to a friendship if you're just willing to communicate more. And she doesn't, you know, she does the whole flight thing. 
And then in the middle of all this, she tells me that she got $1,000 back from her insurance that she overpaid. So now she's getting $1,000 back. And she kind of makes it seem like she's going to pay me more for like all the extra expenses. And it's kind of unclear, right? Because she just tells me that she got all this money. And, and then I'm just like, okay. And then she never pays me anything at all or communicates. So I'm just like, why tell me that you got all this money? Like, what, what's the point of that? I don't understand. And it's not even about the money. Like, it's not even about paying me back because like, that's not the issue, but it's just the principle. Like, don't say you're going to do something and then not do it. And then, you know, I have, I did like all these things for you. Like I got in debt for you to, I don't know, for you to just like do what you said that you wanted to do. So that was on me. Like, I think I took too big of a risk, like a monetary risk and trusted a lot. And I remember I even, she said she didn't have credit or something or she had bad credit. And I had offered to put her as an authorized user on one of my cards because I do that for my brother. And she was like, oh my God, yeah, sure. So I'm like, I do all the stuff and I'm like, okay, you're going to get your card in the mail. She never gets it. And then I end up getting it, like getting it returned to me. Because Oh, because the card got mailed to me, so I'm going to mail it to her. So I'm like, hey, what's your address? I get her address and then I mail it to her. It gets sent back. And I'm like, hey, it got sent back. And she's like, oh, I forgot to give you my apartment number. And I'm just like, okay. So I'm like, whatever, whatever. I'm like, I'm like, I'll give it to you once you're here. And thank God I never in, I never gave it to her. Like she just didn't. I don't know what the hell was up with her. Like, that's the thing. I just don't know. But I don't, even though I'm kind of pissed talking about it, I don't have major resentment towards her. I kind of don't feel any sort of way. Um, It is disappointing because it was a friend that I connected with deeply. Like, I had conversations with her that I couldn't really have with other friends. And I still haven't found that. But It's just kind of like the same with the friend that I used to party with. It's like, is it worth the drama? No, no. And it just like, yeah, no, like I'm I'm not like that was dirty. Like they all did me dirty. And I don't know, like I feel like the only one that I'm open to a friendship with, like to to restart a friendship with is the 10 year friendship. One, because of the length of that friendship. And two, because I feel like selfishness and lack of self-awareness to the extent that she had are can be fixed. My 10-year friendship friend. That I think that can be fixed and I hope that she does. That's the only person I'm open to reigniting something. But I don't I don't know if it can be done. I don't know. Like I'm not really expecting anything and I'm not gonna be the one to reach out because, well, I was the one to reach out all the time. So, yeah. Now, my approach to friendships after all that trauma dumping I just did is that I take my time. I don't get attached to friends like I used to. I don't get attached quickly. And I let time tell whether they're going to be good friends or not. I also don't do much. Like, when I start making new friends, like I have some new friendships that I have right now, I don't really do a lot. Like, I let them communicate. I do what the communicating that I feel is appropriate. And when I do something nice, just because I want to do something nice, I notice. I notice how they react, what they do, their, just their character. Like, I'm more aware of their character before getting attached. And I think that just goes for any sort of relationship, but I'm extra cautious now when it comes to friendships because their character is going to tell you what kind of friend they're going to be and then also I have a lot of types of friends like I have casual friends I have friends that um that are still kind of like in the it sounds really stupid but in the evaluation process and not that they're being you know tested but yeah like I think there there's a vetting process that is necessary when it comes to friendships so have those friends that are in the vetting process. And then I have 
my friends that I've had for a while and I kind of know what kind of friends they are and maybe they're not like the bestest friends I'll ever have but I take I accept them for who they are and at the and I meet them at the capacity that they're able to be good friends so I'm I kind of I just match their energy because they still even if they're not the deepest friendships I could have they still provide value in my life and they're still like decent people so yeah I think I have kind of like a hierarchy level when it comes to friends and I'm just a lot more cautious I'm a lot more cautious I don't let my mommy issues dictate who my friends are going to be and yeah the grieving process has been like with that homoerotic friendship and the, the trio I was so heartbroken I cried so much and I remember even being really small like fresh off the boat immigrant and making new friends and if another friend made if a friend that I had made another friend or was nicer to another girl dude I would want to start crying and I feel so like I had I had really bad abandonment issues so when I did get in fact abandoned I was just crushed so now it's a lot different because even with the 10-year friendship that I had I I don't know if I cried for that one like I might have teared up a little bit but I don't think I cried just because I understand the reality and what is going on and those situations led me to see parts of myself that I wasn't aware of that kind of like brought me down to earth and I was like you know what it's not I can't even villainize these girls because I allowed them to do that like I enabled their poor behaviors I the 10-year friendship I enabled her lack of effort and her selfishness but by always reaching out by always being of service the um, the girl the the one that was supposed to move in with me I think I enabled I I tried I think that one was a little it kind of took me by surprise a little bit more but I think she her issue was that she was so used to being the healed one in relationships and being the one that knew better and I don't want this to sound arrogant or anything like that at all but I think she had a lot of trouble with her shadow work and I don't know I don't I'm not actually I'm not really sure if I enabled anything with that one but I did refuse to further enable it by forgiving that like I think I tr I in the beginning I wanted to forgive it but I realized that I couldn't so that's I don't know about that one and then the other one that my ex-roommate I enabled her poor behavior by being so agreeable with her and then also forgiving the first fuck up with her male friendships like she had a male friend that kicked my door open and acted super rapey with me and I told her about it and oh he was also being super racist and I told her about it and she said that I didn't understand their sense of humor so I enabled that by just letting it go eventually by becoming friends with her because at that point she was just my roommate she wasn't a friend but I eventually let it go and I was like I justified it and I said oh she's young she doesn't know like she's grown from that I bet no no I thought she grew from it she didn't so yeah I had to notice the red flags now so now I'm really really cautious and I make sure that the friends that I have are healed or working diligently on their healing because when you're functioning from trauma and chaos you're only going to sabotage the people around you that care about you and I don't know I think these people like they all of them one thing they all had in common was that they all had bad friends and or bad people in their lives and they treated those bad people way better than they treated me. And that's the thing about not being healed, because I've been there, is that the people that are harming you, you prioritize and you f try to fight for their love. When there's people around you that actually love you, 
that are actually rooting for you, loving you, that you are neglecting. And you're just living off that cycle, living off that trauma. And that's why it's so important to heal. Because then when you refuse to heal or when you just talk about it and don't mean shit, you perpetuate that cycle and you continue sabotaging the good things in your life that are going to promote your healing. So yeah, um, even though I root for these people and I want them to do better, I can't be taking, I can't be just getting beat up over it. Like, like, no, no, like you are an adult and you're responsible for your own life, period. But yeah, now I grieve less. I think I'm I'm less sad over this and I feel a little bit more grounded. Um overall happier and I've learned that when you surround yourself with good people, life is just a lot a lot easier. Because even if you have problems, if you have issues, you could just talk about it. Like it's as simple as that. And when you talk about these things with the people around you that are good for you. There's always like the assumption of good faith, right? Like you always assume that they mean the best or that, and they always assume that of you back. So yeah, like with my best friend, I can basically say anything. And yeah, like the support is just so natural and it's so free flowing. And with my boyfriend, like I know he's my romantic partner, but like this applies to friendship as well and we have to be friends for this to work is we we just have to we have to mention what's wrong like if there's something wrong we just have to say it right then and there we assume the best of each other and i i'm the toxic one in this because he's way more healed than i am so i've had to learn to be more calm be more patient assume the best and and yeah like him being so healed and me actively working on my healing has jump started my healing. Like the relationship that I have with my boyfriend has accelerated the healing process. And that um that's only able to happen because he's healed and because I'm working on my healing. So yeah, like there's just so many positives to to being in that state and surrounding yourself with with those people. So yeah. It's really important. And don't hang out with people that you don't like because like that girl that was my roommate. Uh I mean I I feel like all these girls were were smart and they I think they all have the capacity to to learn and to grow. But yeah, like this girl she she hung out with people she did not like and she was in a constant state of complaining. Like they were all in a constant state of complaining about issues that they were not willing to fix because they were never the problem and you have to find a balance of like sometimes you're not going to be the problem sometimes other people are the problem and then sometimes you are going to be the problem like just be objective with your own shit be honest but yeah that concludes today's episode bitches because i am i'm done with this i'm done uh this was more of a therapy session for me more of a yapping session i hope that somebody was able to take something from this and that you are cautious with your friendships that you have good people around you and people that love you because if you have people that are not willing to work on themselves they're only going to try and bring you down with them and it's only going to be negative so doesn't mean that anybody has to be perfect because bitch i am not perfect i am so flawed in so many ways i've been broken down by life but just be with people that are willing to work that are actively diligently working on their healing not just saying that they're working on it and you know looking into zodiacs and all these like healing sessions not like actively doing their shadow work to heal themselves to improve their lives because when you're good to yourself you can be good to others but yes thank you guys so much for listening follow me on social media at amy savalsa and at Salsa666 on TikTok. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.